to you as well. Okay. Um, sorry, I'll go back to. So thank you so much for sharing all of those. Now I'm hoping, does yours, is our little photos all in the middle of your page? No, I've just moved it. Um, Mine's off to the right. Is that off to the right? <laughs> you'll see. Um, so decluttering and, and the other thing about computers is so I'm looking at the top of my screen, which looks like I'm looking at myself now, but whereas when I'm looking at you, it'll look like that I'm looking at not at my screen because your video camera is in a different position. So I'll try and look at the whole so it looks like I'm looking at you, but otherwise I'm actually looking at you and I'm not looking just off into the distance. Um, so the objectives of today is what's been stopping you um, why is it important to declutter and get organised? How would it look if you could declutter and get organised? And then the outcome is I hope that you're going to go away and be inspired to declutter at least one area in your home. And so, yeah, being a teacher, like this is what we actually do with the students. The students actually get a learning objective and an outcome for every single lesson, even down prep this is exactly what they actually get. So it's something I'm used to and I think it really helps people, even adults, to just visualise where we're going and what we're doing. So what has been stopping you? And you just shared some of the things that have been stopping you. And lack of time is definitely one of the biggest ones that I hear from mums. And it is, it's about changing that and saying it's actually not a lack of time, it's actually... A lack of priority for it and by doing it it actually does create more time in our lives um, it's it's I know we need time to actually sit down and do it but we can um, come up with strategies to make it easier and but in the long run it's actually something that's going to help you next one is feeling too overwhelmed like the picture like just looking around and going okay so where do I even start um, it's such a big thing to do and I have no idea what I'm going to do first. Lack of routine. So sometimes um, it's great to be able to build it into our routine, into our daily life or weekly. Like sometimes it's like once a week if we do one particular thing, but also I'll share with you later on some organisation things, just daily things that I do that have sort of built into our routine now as well. And then self-doubt. So I think this is the one that I've heard the most in the Simply Happy Mums group, Facebook group, is that people are like, yeah, but I'm not a super organised person. And it's like, no, you don't need to be super organised to be able to declutter. You, um, what we need to do is challenge that story that we've been had in our head that you need to be actually um, organised because we can make it as simple as we want. So it could be a matter of just decluttering the tea towel drawer or decluttering the, um, what else is it? something else simple, um, the bathroom, just your, maybe your makeup, like just one small component within your house might be the thing that you start with rather than taking on a whole bedroom or all the toys. It's just one particular drawer in your house. And then, oh, and then the last one was resistance and fear. So these are the biggest ones. So is it a fear? Are we worried about what we might uncover by starting? So that's one of the reasons that a lot of people can't start, um, can't start is because of the fear. And the other one is um, resistance. So for me, cleaning out my toys, I have said for now, nearly 12 months, I want to clean out the kids' toys because as Misha shared before, her daughter's, I think, similar age to my daughter, and they're not playing with their toys like they used to. But to me, it's like I had to think about it. And obviously, when I started doing the declutter month, it was like, okay, so why am I not cleaning out the toys? I can clean out everything else. I'm cleaning out a cabinet of nine years of paperwork, but I'm not cleaning out the toys, which aren't even that messy. And it was like, well, the resistance is that my kids are getting older and it's admitting that um, they're not young anymore. So um, it's looking, and it is, it's looking a lot deeper as to why maybe you can't clean that out. Clothes, clothes is probably the first, first one that people I've talked to say, I can't clean out the clothes or I can't clean out the cabinet because I'm worried about 
all the bills that I've maybe not done or cleaned out that um, that table or area in the kitchen or, you know, the middle table because they know there's stuff sitting there they need to do and it's that fear or resistance about doing it. So can you relate to time you said, Bianca? Sally, which one would you say would be your most the stopping you? Um. I'd say a lack of routine for myself rather than uh, my routine is all about what the kids are doing and nothing for me. Yep. Yeah. And probably the overwhelm. It is. It's so overwhelming just to look at it and start. Um, so why is, I don't know what pictures are all right on top of that. Why is it important to declutter? Um, so first one is it's going to help us with stuck energy. So, um, clutter is a gradual build-up of things. It leaves us feeling drained and it actually affects our subconscious level. So if you think about the area in your home that's maybe um, full of clutter or has more clutter that you wouldn't want there, so your kitchen, if your kitchen has clutter, it's hard to nourish ourselves and our families. If there's clutter in the lounge room, um, we'll find it hard to show our true self if there's clutter in the hallways, it means that our life isn't clear. We don't have a clear direction on what we want. And if there's clutter in our own bedroom, that there will be intimacy issues. So if we deal with those clutter those in those areas in our lives, it will help clear up those other parts that's actually subconsciously underneath. So it's actually a lot deeper than we even think it is. Um, Clutter will help us is important because it gives us a calmer life. If, um, if we have too much clutter, we're going to feel stressed and overwhelmed like we talked about. Um, so like, for example, looking at our wardrobe. So if your wardrobe is full of clothes, you're going to walk in there and go, I don't even know what to wear today. Like what? I have no clothes, but there's like, there's so many clothes, but it's like that decision making. So you've got to make way too many decisions and you're creating more brain clutter for yourself. So having that um, limited amount of clothes or the clothes that are your favourites that you love to wear and just having them there is going to help you to feel calmer as well. Um, another example is your pantry. So just not having, having things in there that you use. So, you know, buying, having a recipe that's, and I love um, Claire K Creations, which I've interviewed before and she's in the Simply Happy Mums and she does share recipes, has got a great online business and she talks about having really limited things in your pantry. Don't have that tomato sauce but have a tin of tomatoes that's more versatile and can use in a lot more things. So really simplifying our pantry items so that we um, it's less, less things to worry about in there and it also saves us money because it's not something sitting there that you use for one recipe that you never um, use again. And she has, she had a great download the other week that I shared. It was like 11 recipe or 11 recipes with 11 items and that's all you need is 11 items. Um, the other thing is paperwork. So just by the building up paperwork, we're going to miss um, bills. And we're going to miss maybe events. Um, that are coming up. So definitely by decluttering, you will feel a lot calmer. You're going to be more motivated. So if you feel motivated once you've done it, you're going to tackle other things in your life. Like I just mentioned before, if you've got a um, decluttered pantry, then you're more likely to eat healthier or start to look at what, what, what recipes you want to use because it's a lot easier for you to do that with a cleaner, simpler pantry. Um, yeah, and the next one is more organised. So, yeah, we said we're definitely going to feel so much more organised if we don't have so much, so many things clouding our judgement. Um, you'll just feel more in control of your life and you're going to breathe easier. Like, can you agree? Like, can you, can you remember when you've decluttered something, how you've felt after you've done it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like just that that filing cabinet for me was like, oh, can you just breathe easier after doing that? And Sean was like, yes. And I was like, same. Um, and then consume less because if you've got things um, that you just use and that you need, you're going to not going to, especially the pantry, you're not going to be using as much 
or like for myself, decluttering and putting um, like wrapping paper and cards together in one area means that I'm not going, oh, I wonder if we've got those boy birthday cards. Have we got any boy paper? And because it's all in the one area, it means that I'm not going out and having to buy more and getting home and go, oh, we already had that. Um, so also, so they're the, the, um, the other three people that I probably got a lot of tips and I've read is The Essentialism, um, which is by Greg, Greg McEwen. With everything you do, buy, own and surround yourself with, you ask yourself, is it essential? Um, the other one is The Minimalist. I, have either of you watched The Minimalist documentary? No, no I've heard a lot about it. Oh, amazing. So it's on Netflix and they were travelling <laughs> about a month ago. They were in Melbourne and um, there's... It's very, some of it's very like way out there, but I like their concept. It is a tool that can assist you in finding freedom. It is about making more conscious decisions about your life and stop getting into debt and also it's better for the environment. And then there's Maria Kondo, which is probably the first one that I was ever exposed to when we lived in Japan and the approach and like everyone follows this because the houses are so tiny. Like even we were living in an apartment, every cupboard, everything was actually tiny. Like your chopping board was tiny. Your cups, were everything was just little and small. And they value, um, the Japanese values are to surround yourself that are, with items that spark joy. If you don't love it, don't keep it. Um, and I love Sally, you, I think it was you that shared before about you like to keep things because they might have um, like a sentimental value around it. So they really embrace, as long as it's got some meaning to you, even if you're not going to use it or you all like for myself, have it on a display um, rather than keeping it in a cupboard because it's something that will spark joy in you. So I've definitely, I think from her book, I started to get once my kids got old enough, some of my Nana's um, nice you know, China sets. I'm like, what's the point of them in my cupboard? I'll have them out on display. Look, if it does get broken, it gets broken. But at least, you know, I can see it day in, day out. And the kids, I think, now that they're old enough, can appreciate it as well. And the last one is is to discover purpose. Ooh, I don't know where it's going. So to discover purpose or prioritise more effectively um, so look for lasting happiness through life itself and not through things. Um, so has either of you what followed or, or done anything to do with Maria as well? No. Mm -hmm. Can you still see me, Narelle? Yeah, I can. Can okay. you see yourself? Because hit, I've hidden myself and I'm like, am I there or not? <laughs> you, yeah, I can see you, but you've probably just done it on your own <laughs> computer. <laughs> so is it... Um, oh, hang on, I'll go to the next one. So how to declutter. So these are just some of the tips that I've got from pretty much from those three people over the years and um, other people that I've spoken to is to visualise your end destination, which is definitely something that from wellness coaching that we do with everything is to basically define your why. So why you would want, be really clear about why you would want to declutter and you've all um, expressed what it would be for you if you, if you could declutter. Um, how you would feel from doing that. So it's being really clear about it. So it's not saying, um, I want to be, um, I want to live a clutter free life. It's like saying, I want to be calmer and have a simpler life, or I want to sleep better, or I want to eat better by decluttering. That's what's going to help me. So just getting that really clear on the reason why you'd actually want to start decluttering or keep up decluttering in your house or your life. Ask yourself, is it essential or does it spark joy? Um, so looking at anything that you buy and or even anything in your house, is it something that you need to file away, need to throw away or need to donate um, or sell, sell, sell to someone else online? Um, a great way is to tidy, tidy by categories, not the room. So what you would find is like, You've probably got books and books in all different areas of your house. 
So it would be looking at the books. So you might just do the books in your room or in the um, spare room and then you might do the kids' books, but you just start with one particular category first. They suggest, this is from I think all three of them suggest it, clothes to do first, books, then paper and then miscellaneous. Um, I probably find kitchen has been my easiest to declutter. If you were to think about it, which area would you start with in your life, Sally? I've actually started, but I've moved on. Okay. So I started in the kitchen and did, um, you know, the spice drawer and the Tupperware yeah. drawer. And then I looked at the food area and I went, I'm going to go do the bedroom. Yeah. And so <laughs> I've walked away and I've done my clothes and... That's about where I'm at. I need to, I, I, and then I also gave up on the clothes. I did about half of that and then went on oh, no, and this is getting too hard. And so I need to get back to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. But, but see, that's great now. And you're probably more aware that, you know, okay, the kitchen, that was a bit hard. I might just go to the tea towel drawer or something yeah. else, another I'm, drawer. <laughs> I'm not, I need to get onto the more difficult areas of yeah. the areas that I'm starting rather than doing the easy bits and walking away. Oh no, <laughs> no. Start with the keep going easy, 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 and then eventually you'll be ready to um, to tackle that that big difficult part. What yes. about you, Bianca? What would you? Have, which one have you tackled any of them? Um, no, well, the one that I really want to do is my clothes. But I've also read that um, Marie Kondo book, yeah. and the thing. <laughs> The thing that puts me off is, you know, how they say you need to get everything out so you can look at everything. And then I'm like, if I do that, I'm never going to have time to pack it all away. <laughs> so, yep. You know, you kind of have to make more mess yep. to start with, to sort through everything, yep. to declutter. And that's what puts me off a lot of the time is I might have the time to get it all out, but then I'm not going to have the time to put it all away. Yeah, definitely. And I loved um, Claire shared with me now um, the last blog that I did in the interview. She suggests putting a 15-minute timer on. So pulling it all out, putting the 15-minute timer on, doing as much as you can in the 15 minutes and then just getting a box, putting it all in that for the moment and sitting it in a corner and coming back the next day, setting the 15-minute timer, continue on that way is another that was her suggestion i i personally couldn't do that if i start i'm gonna keep going because i actually love doing it anyway um so yeah i'd find that really hard to do but i think it's a great strategy actually i did use it for the filing cabinet but i still went over but um it did help me to get started with it but that that was her suggestion anyway of um starting so store things in like um, things together so for me I had yeah our paper like obviously you know your paper your present paper and it's big long rolls of it it was up in this cupboard in our laundry and then it was like the cards were in a box in the study and then there was like the string and little bits and stickers and stuff were in another box in the kids area so it was like now that I've actually put it all together I bought one of those big long it's like a zip up thing from Kmart put it all together I have definitely not had to go out and buy anything because it's all there together and it's a lot easier to see when a party's coming up and go oh yeah we've got the boys cards there there's still some boys paper and I've definitely found that that has helped um yeah so thinking about how you store things and where you store them and trying to bring them all together to and also just having it clearly labeled so definitely the to with toys also having those more clearly labelled for them so that they actually are more likely to put them away. Have you, either of you had problems with kids' toys? Yes. <laughs> Not too much. No. Yeah. My, my kids are so little, so they're all being used a lot now, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's when they stop using them that it's sort of, okay, you need to put some of that stuff away now. Or, or they, go to, they go to kinder, I found, when they started kinder. Um, and you were like, you're not even here all the time anymore. Get that stuff out of my lounge room. It doesn't need to be here anymore. I'm a chronic tidier. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, next, the next bit about organisation, I can't wait to um, hear your tips too. Oh. And, and then the next one will be 
start for a set amount of time, which is the one that Claire suggested. So put a timer on and also decide. So this is probably Bianca for you to decide whether you're going to do a whole overhaul of that room or that area or whether you're just going to start with a small tidy up. So deciding that to start with and looking at the time that you've got available um, will also help or whether you do the 10 minutes. So yeah, some of the areas is like a handbag is something that is a great place to even start. And it's not gonna take you probably longer than the 15 minutes. Even though it looks overwhelming, it actually doesn't take very long at all. And now that I've started, I actually am doing it more regularly. Cutlery drawer, bathroom drawer, underwear is another one too, which doesn't take as long as you think it will. And so it's a good like 15 minute one to start with that actually will give you momentum from doing that. And then the biggest thing is acknowledge how you feel. So look at after you've done it, how did you feel? Because once you acknowledge how you feel, then you're more likely to go, oh, actually, I feel better, I feel lighter, and that wasn't that hard. And that only took 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, so therefore, it's not going to take me too hard, too long to do the next thing that I really want to tackle as well. So it, and it's also um, builds confidence and it will help you just um, give you a healthy level of self-care like you're doing something for you to help you. So you're more likely then to do it again. Um, Misha, we were just talking about before too. I bet you by, <laughs> Did you hear the tidy by character uh, category? So what, what room would you want to start with or what area do you think would be manageable for you to start with? Well, Tiana actually got up yesterday and cleared out the pantry. Um, so that was kind of cool. So I helped with that. But I, my biggest one is I, I want my room back. <laughs> Yep. I want my room decluttered. I've got clothes, you know, my favourites that I wear all the time pretty much live on my bed because my wardrobe and dresser are full of clothes that I don't wear. Um, but it's, yeah, it's getting rid of stuff and mm. that rotation. I just don't have time for other stuff. So I just wear all the stuff that is out. Yep. But I've just been clearing the top of my dresser. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a little area. So. Yeah. And how did you feel after you did that? It, it's still going. So, yeah, yeah it's still going. But oh, good. it's good. <laughs> acknowledge, acknowledge how you feel once you've done it because that'll get you onto the next I, part of your room. We can do stuff. Like I, we decluttered and I had the whole kitchen breakfast bar clean. But we can't maintain it. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest challenge is maintaining it once it's been done. Yeah. Yep, so getting it into a routine so that, yeah, it continues on. The next one is how to get organised. So from decluttering, uh, organisation will definitely follow as well. Um, so the first one is um, justify your pu your purchase. So, you know, in, in I think the essentialism as well as the... Um, um, Oh, the other one, um, I can't think of what it's called now. He talks about one in, one out. So whatever you buy, it's because you're replacing something that's either <coughs> on its way out if it's close or it's replacing something that's maybe broken um, in your house or you're ready to give something else up to take something in. So definitely the close thing for me is um, as soon as, you know, something's looking faded and old <coughs> and it's time to upgrade it, it's like finding that similar item to replace it and then it's gone, that one's gone. Um, so you'll find I'm wearing a lot of black and a lot of stripes and it's not that maybe I've had it for three or four years, some of them maybe, but it's because then I've just gone, okay, I'm going to update it now. It's got a hole in it or whatever and it's the same thing. So I've just worked out what I like and I'm just going to stick with that and there's an odd... Thing, or maybe it's like scarves or jewellery that I use that um, helps. So that definitely has helped me with my brain clutter in the morning because I know exactly what I'm going to wear because there's not too much choice. Um, I, I tried the 33, 333, I think, projects. So it was like 33 items. I couldn't do 33. I think I've got it down to 50 clothes and that wasn't included, including my accessories and shoes. But that's what they suggest to do down to that. So I was like, okay, I'll try, but not. I couldn't do the extreme. And it doesn't include underwear, um, your pyjamas or any active wear that you exercise in. If you wear active wear, 
that you wear daily, then it wasn't included. That's actually <laughs> part of your part of your clothes. Um, but definitely, that's a great challenge. Maybe so extreme, but um, to even just think about that, and it doesn't include like items from summer. It separates them into summer and winter. So at the moment, it's a bit hard because I'm pulling out a summer dress one day, and the next day you're into your winter jumpers like today. So, yeah. Um, putting things back in their place. So instead of um, a one-touch policy, so you once you pick it up, it goes back into where it actually is. So that means having labelled containers and an area that it actually has to go into. Whereas if, you know, you get to the cupboard and I've completely, you know, done this myself, open the cupboard, look in there and just go, oh, my gosh, now I've got to pull out. 10 containers to get into the container to put something in. So if you make it easy for yourself and it's labelled or it's an easy access container, then you're more likely to put it away. If it's too hard, you are not going to put it away. You can sit on that shelf and come back and then there'll be like 10 of those things that have to go in that container in another little container. So just trying to simplify it and make it as easy as you can. Um, and the other thing, your kids are more likely to put it away if it's easy for them to do and it's labelled as well and it just makes it easy for tidying up. Tidying up then is the next one, is tidy up each night. If you leave them flying around, um, that's how we're going to start our day in a negative way. So we'll start positively if there's no clutter around, around or at least in our eyesight in the morning. So if there are things and you just can't deal with it, if you put it in a box and put it in the laundry, and deal with it the next day, that's fine as well. As long as that you walk into the kitchen or your living area and it's decluttered. So I have mine here. This is my kids. And so they have two of these boxes that I just bought from Kmart, Kmart last year. And anything I find lying around the house, I put it in their box and then it goes in the laundry. And they then, when they're looking for anything, shoes, or it's Jimmy. Jimmy's, Jimmy, tomorrow morning will be like, where's my dressing gown? And it's in there. You know, what else has got? Fidget spinner. And the other thing that we put in here is our washing. So when I've done their folding, um, my husband and I just put the two boxes there. We need to get ones for us too. Two boxes there and we put their folding in there as well. So they have to take it down to their room and um, put it away. And they've been doing it for the last 12, over 12 months is actually putting it away themselves. Jimmy's not so good, but Tosh definitely does. And if they haven't put it away by the time I'm doing the washing again, it just gets tipped out on the floor and they hate that because then it's like on the floor and they want it in their, in their um, drawers. So they're more inclined to do it now because I've started just tipping it out, saying, okay, I'm taking those boxes back if they're not tipped out by tomorrow morning. Um, but just having those boxes has really helped uh, stop them going where's my teddy bear where's this where's that it's like we'll go and check your box because it's probably in there and just at night time my husband and I are just throwing it in there shut the door and we're not having to look at it or deal with it and I mean it's really once kids sort of get to kinder age that you can probably implement that more effectively using a diary or a calendar um, so I've got just here the picture and that is life sorted. So Joe, the little mum that's in the picture is a um, app designer and she designed that app and um, I was part of a mastermind with her last year. So I met her and we were on her beta group trialing it out and, and letting her know what bits we like and what bits we didn't like and she's been developing it. So I don't think it's even on the app store, Apple app store as paid yet. So you can still, if you're interested to go on there and it's still free at the moment and it's wonderful because it, the best thing for me is that my husband also gets the notifications. So he knows anything that's going on as the kids, her kids are a bit older, teenagers, um, they get notifications or they add things. And it's just a great way of communicating because what I was finding I'd be out and I'd be making an appointment and I didn't have my calendar with me or a diary with me and I'd have to write it down and then come back and check. Whereas this way I've got that with me now and also I can see if Sean has something on as well 
and definitely our communication of where to go like it's and probably released me that I don't have to think about everything it's in the app and if you ask me it's like just go have a look at the app where's that birthday party have a look you can take photos and it saves like a birthday invitation there and it also has a to-do list so you can see there oh that's hers is the to-do list so you can add shopping list things to do you can share that with other people or you can just keep it as your own personal. And it does link to Google Calendar. So when people book coaching with me, it actually straight away uploads it from Google Calendar to there. So I think there's other calendars that it can upload as well to it. So that has been fantastic for us as well as we do have the calendar, a written calendar which our kids like to look at um, each day so they sort of know what's going on as well. But as they get older, like this is going to be great to have life sorted. Um, I know there's other versions out there, um, but I did do a video a while ago about why life sorted was a better app than some of the other ones that are out there. And yeah, so you can look back and I'll even share the link to that. Um, set up systems. So for incoming paperwork. So I have here and I, we've got one in the, down in our um, kitchen area. And when things come in, it's a box, so we don't have to look at it. We put it in the box, um, but we know that that stuff hasn't been dealt with. And so at the end of the week or Sunday sometimes, we go through it and fill in all the kids' permission forms and whatever else and put everything into the calendar. So it's one day a week that I'll find a time to do it, usually Sunday or otherwise Monday night. And then what I also find is I had this, we've got this big filing cabinet and I just hate pulling all the things out. So I went and bought like a little thing here and I put them in there because I'm more inclined to pull that out, put it in there. And then as it gets filled up, then I add it into the, the big filing cabinet. So it's just having some way or system of what you're going to do with your incoming paper or bills or receipts. So it just doesn't pile up on you and, um, and then become too overwhelming. And then having an efficient to-do list. So I love the, um, Martha Beck. Um, she shares the bag it. So you either bin it, delete it, or say no to it. Um, or barter it is her next one. And it's can someone else do it? So could the kids do it? Could your husband do it? Could you outsource it? Could it be something like, um, for example, myself working this week and last week, I outsourced our, gross, uh, our groceries, our I wish, um, three of our meals and I bought um, the fresh lunch fairy here in Geelong and got her meals delivered and I froze one for this week and I had two last week. So it's just outsourcing something that you just can't do at the moment. Um, what was the other one? Outsourcing. Could someone else help you? Is there someone else who could pick up the kids from school? And I suppose another one for me was um, putting my kids in holiday program, having lots of work to do. And it was like, okay, I'm going to prioritise that work. So therefore they're going to have to go to the holiday program for at least one day of each of the week. And then the last one is better it. So it's a three B system. What could make this experience more positive and enjoyable so is it like listening to a podcast while you're cleaning or listening to music while you're cleaning so it's adding a little sweetener to make it more magnetic for you to want to actually do it um, yeah so that I found is such a great the three B's bag it barter it or better it um, so what is next what I would love if you could for me is to share any wins that you have from from doing this like if there's a tip that you've got that you're then found that's really useful i would love for you to share it because it really helps and motivates other people within the simply happy mums group um, i'll also send you just a quick evaluation which is like three questions that you could share i would love to hear what you thought and any any tips to to um, help me and then, or leave a comment on the Simply Happy um, Wellness Coaching, my Facebook page or Instagram page, if it was Instagram that you saw. So I would love to hear what was your, like, what was the most important thing that you got or the best thing that you got out of tonight, Sally? Um. Uh, to be honest, I guess when I when it began, I said motivation. I, I, I'm feeling all motivated to return back <laughs> to those areas and 
to um, to clear my mind and um, yeah, I, I related a lot to the energy side of things, to be honest. And mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll get back into it. And what about you, Bianca? Um, yeah, I think the same. Just sort of refreshing. Um, having read a couple of books about it, but just <laughs> not not doing it. Um, yeah, just refreshing that um, desire to to get it done. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you you're probably now feeling like you are ready to go and declutter, and and get organized so you do you feel like now that you've got some help to help you go forward and actually do that yes yeah do you um send through those notes i will i'll share the recording and the slides as well with you so yeah i'll send yeah. through tomorrow I'll go back over those and i've just uploaded the app too Oh, did you? I liked on it. Oh, it's great. It really is. I thought before has... I forget, I'll bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, had a, that on she had some great videos as well, showing you little things that, like tips on how to do it and what to do with it as well. Um, so what if you could get that motivation back up and you also just had that um, self-confidence to do it as well as like that looking at your fear and resistance around it, how do you think you would feel? Less stress. <laughs> oh, my aim would be to clear my clear my mind so I can focus on what I need to do in the future because yeah. I feel like I'm in a rut. It, yes, definitely. I mean, and we all do. That we all get into that rut, and we're coming into winter, so it doesn't help, does it? Mm. Spring clean time. <laughs> yeah, without being spring. Well, these are sort of some of the things that I look at as well is about being stuck in a rut and also the confidence um, with the Mums Reboot program. Would you like to hear more about that? Yeah. Yep. So it's just, it's an eight week coaching program and it's online and it is, I send out notes on a Monday with a little bit of information and one workshop, uh, workshop one worksheet to share some ideas on moving forward and then on the Thursday I'll be doing a Q&A a bit like this but probably not so many slides it's more about discussion on what you found and how um, because it won't be recorded it would be just more sharing with each other how you found it and and what were you struggling with um, a bit more of a coaching session rather than um, sharing like this and it is eight weeks so I did it for a lot less last last year, but found the feedback was the mum was like, we need longer, like it's just, and cut it up into smaller chunks and share smaller things to move forward. And it's also about you developing a vision and then goals, goals to work through over the eight weeks. And it's, so it's um, $200 for the eight weeks initial payment. And then after the four weeks, it is a second payment of $80. And if you feel that it is um, not for you and it wasn't, then you don't have to pay the second $80 and you can drop out. And then if you don't even think you got value from even the first four weeks, there's a 100% money back guarantee as well. Um, I think I covered. So it's more about feeling confident. So it just del um, delves deeper into each of these to help simplify life and be more confident and be pretty much simply happy because that's what everyone seems to want to be is just happier. Um, but thank you so much for joining me tonight. And next month it'll be another topic because we're going into chaos and calming the chaos within our houses. So, um, yeah, I'll share some information. So if oh, so the Mums Reboot actually starts next Monday. So the end of that is tomorrow is the close of cart so if you're interested um i'll share that link as well with you and when did you say the um the online session is 